Ms. Murphy, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Thank you for taking the time to uh, sit down with us today. Wanted to start off just briefly. For those who don't know you, would you tell us who you are and a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um, uh, my name is Brenda Murphy. Uh, I am actually the president of the South Carolina State Conference uh, in AACP. Have been, uh, well, I'm going into my fourth year as president, actually fifth year. I've been president for four years. Uh, and so my uh, fifth term, uh, fifth year begins in January. Okay. Um, South Carolina is currently going through the redistricting process. Could you tell us a little bit of, about what the NAACP has been doing to help educate communities about this process? I will be happy to. It's been a very busy time in terms of us trying to prepare uh, our communities um, for redistricting. Mm -hmm. um, back in January, we started planning in terms of um, making, you know, not too many people uh, pay uh, know what redistricting means. Right. And so we wanted to make sure that they realize the importance of redistricting and and to become engaged in uh, the process. So back in uh, April of this year, uh, we started, um, well, really with the training of our pr local presidents. We have presidents uh, branches in all um, of the, I, actually counties, throughout the county, counties of South Carolina. Some of the counties have more than uh, one branch. So it was a major effort to first um, train or provide uh, training to our presidents, their leadership, and, uh, you know, the executive group, and then other members uh, that wanted to begin ha have the opportunity to be involved in that training as well. I don't know if you are know Mr. John Roof, but he's been involved with the NAACP. I know um, at least the past 20 uh, years in terms of the redistricting process. So uh, we were able to obtain his services um, and training uh, was provided um, statewide. We started first statewide uh, in terms of um, educating um, our th that target audience on redistricting and the implications of redistricting. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, the census was very important. And so um, we had to tie all that together in terms of letting them know how the census had uh, implications for redistricting as well. So it really was bringing about an awareness at the state level uh, for the president mm -hmm. and um, then to begin the work at the counties. So we have been working very, very hard and very diligent in order to make sure that our communities are aware mm -hmm. of what's happening, the importance of it, uh, because this determines who is going to be our representatives for the next 10 years. And that's very important because they have to advocate for our needs. And I'll stop right there because you may have a specific question you well, want to ask me. Well, 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 this is this is about the third time I've been through uh through reapportionment. Um, just just being aware of what's going on. I think I'm telling my age, <laughs> but mm -hmm. you know, it is. This process has been very different. I, I, I can say the map of the state, the state house, house of representatives just released their map and it's uh, have, has a lot of organizations um, are saying that this map, it looks like it's a classic example of gerrymandering and wants to know your thoughts on this current map that the house is proposing. Okay, let me just say yes. I do think you know, there is gerrymandering. Uh, there has been some splitting of uh, our communities. Um, uh, 
it's a lot going on. Um, that's why it is so important for not just the NAACP, but individuals in the community to come and take a part and express what their concerns are about the map. And um, I don't know exactly if, if you know exactly how much has been happening with that. But uh, after we prepared our um, actually our communities to um, to be able to address some of the issues such as gerrymandering, uh, asking that guidelines be followed in terms of criteria uh, when the lines were drawn, before the lines were drawn and are presented to us, uh, there were hearings. I think this is the first time we have, um, and, I, and I'm going to just say it's because of not just the state office, but those presidents out in the community getting out, having meetings uh, involving the community that I think more of us were involved in that process of, of you know, when they were having the hearings, right. they attended hearings, um, they voiced uh, their concerns, uh, and that was done throughout the state as these hearings were done this year. Um, I'm not going to say that uh, the legislative, well, the group, the subcommittees that were doing the maps were as transparent as they say they are. They have not been transparent, uh, you know, uh, in terms of how and what they were doing to define communities of interest, making sure that they were following um, the law in terms of, um, well, they say they were following the law, but uh, ensuring that. Uh, they were not packing districts. And so it was just a great um, participation, I would say, from throughout the state mm -hmm. in terms of letting what our needs, our concerns being known. Do we think they listened? That, no. That's the question. <laughs> no. I, no, I don't think they listened. Uh, no. As a matter of fact, we're still, um, as a matter this morning, uh, I um, uh, listened at the uh, hearing, well, not really hearing, it, it, uh, the House met uh, and um, they, for review of the maps and to take amendments. Mm -hmm. And um, our, we, we did, a map was developed by the NAACP. Mm -hmm. It was submitted and there were others, but I think we followed the letter of the law in terms of what we submitted. Um, did they receive that? No, I, they tabled it. Mm -hmm. I, it didn't surprise me that they did. Um, and then the League of Women's Voters, uh, and I'll have to give credit to um, Representative Wendy Brawley because she, uh, she was the one that made, uh, made uh, suggested the amendments, which were both tabled. But I think both maps uh, were representative of what it needed to be. Right. But with the map that they currently have, you know, I don't, I, I'm going to say I don't believe in uh, protection of incumbents, but we need to have opportunity districts where we can select someone that's going to represent our needs. Mm -hmm. If if that doesn't happen, of course, we should vote and we should uh, elect somebody else. Mm -hmm. That opportunity, if these maps uh, are approved, you know, I guess uh, by the Ju Judiciary Committee and go forward for signature, then we are going to lose out on opportunities for um, representation. Mm -hmm. There are several several, I will say at least four districts that we may lose representation. And I'm, I won't say I'm sorry to say, because it's a reality. Right. Uh, there is, um, they have pitted African Americans against African Americans. Mm -hmm. Uh, so by redrawing the lines differently. So you have um, districts where we had the potential of two 
uh, representative, there's now one. And maybe those two people and two African Americans are competing against each other. Mm. That's unfair. We are, we are losing. We don't. We are not well represented right now. <laughs> right. Uh, and so now we are seeing the potential for a decrease in the number of um, people of color right. that will be there to represent what our needs are. Okay. I, I'm aware that the NAACP uh, has spoken out against, the state NAACP has spoken out against this current map. And uh, currently, it's, it's my understanding that you guys have uh, filed a lawsuit. Can you speak to that? Not at this time. I'm sorry to say um, I, I, I cannot talk about the lawsuit at okay. this time. Okay. What is the significance when we talk about, a lot of times you hear where they'll talk about uh, packing and cracking. What exactly is the NAACP uh, looking for when they look at these lines to see if it was possibly uh, any gerrymandering going on? What exactly are you guys looking for? Are they looking at the opportunities for increased representation? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, for example, um, packing putting all African-Americans, uh, people of color in one area per se, which right. lessen the opportunity for representation because maybe they could have been, the district could have been aligned in such a way that was an opportunity for two mm -hmm. um, packing. Uh, cracking, um, maybe in a community, there is a good, um, in terms of, you know, they have numbers. There are numbers that uh, are used to define uh, what is representative of a district. Mm -hmm. So there may be an area that meets the criteria uh, and the numbers, and it may be what I'll call a good district. Mm -hmm. And there's the potential an opportunity for a person of color to be elected as an official. Um, in terms of the cracking, the lines would be drawn and, you know, they are split. Right. So, uh, you know, and, and there are several areas that it's very evident that this is occurring um, in a number of area, uh, counties in our state, mm -hmm. in our state. As, uh, as a nonpartisan organization, you guys are, are, are you guys are tasked with the, the job of working with both parties. Um, how has working with the parties been in this process? Are you getting the uh, necessary support from the, uh, in terms of the Democratic Party, in terms of resources and aid, and in terms of the Republican Party, are they willing to talk or will they take meetings? Or how, how is the interaction between the parties been with, with the NAACP in the state? We are nonpartisan. Um, you know, um, we go to the meetings, uh, they listen, but whether or not there is um, maybe uh, action based on what has been presented, I can't say that that occurs. Ms. Murphy, in your opinion, what are some of the things that the African-American uh, communities here in South Carolina should be concerned about? And what are some of the things we should be doing going forward, even if this map uh, is accepted in its current form? What are some of the things that we should be doing to make sure that our political power is not diluted in the future? Mm -hmm. uh, there, I, I, there are a number of organizations um, throughout our state. Um, I think there needs to be more coalitions working toward the same mission. Uh, you know, um, and I'm doing what I what I can in terms of when there's a, a need for us to come together. Of course, I will invite others. I think we we've, we've got to unify more. We've got to work toward a, a common goal, and and we have to do we have to do it in unison in order to be heard, because I think we dilute our message when we have separate groups 
um, not working together. Okay. And um, I think we're going to have to put more effort uh, into that. We have major, major issues with uh, education, uh, poverty, especially in the rural areas, um, economic uh, sustainability. Uh, our youth needs attention in terms of um, developing um, their social skills, their leadership skills. We just have so many, so many needs. And somehow we need, we have to come together to come up with a plan. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say a plan, um, I think we're a little bit disjointed and not working together to decide what, how we can make this work. And when I say that, not only organizations, but I, I think we, uh, the ministry needs to be included as well. Um, and I, and I just have to say, um, and I don't know why this is, um, we, as, and I say, I'll say, instead of people, I'll say as organizations or, or as, um, um, the many, uh, different um, religious uh, groups. Somehow we've got to figure it out and how we can make it better for our young people because we really have some challenges today that's going to be to our demise if we don't get it right. We've got to get it right. I, I would agree. Um, well, Ms. Murphy, um, thank you for taking the time to uh, talk with me today. If somebody wanted to reach out to the NAACP to find out how they can get involved with what you guys are doing with redistricting, how would they do that? Or what's the best way to do that? Um, they can they can call the state office. It's 803-754-4584. Again, that's 803-754-4584. Or they can also contact us at um, info, I-N-F-O, at S-C-N-A-A-C-P dot O-R-G. We need, we, we encourage you to, con uh, those uh, of you that are not members to become members. We have a lot of work to do. There's a lot of opportunities. Um, you know, I think... We in the pro we have we've identified uh, a number of needs and a number of of, of a, a potential um, avenues to accomplish accomplish those needs, but we need the volunteers to help with getting the work done. So I highly encourage and 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 I would be very pleased if anyone is willing to help us out with the work that needs to be done to please contact us at that, at that number or the email address that I've just given. Uh, Ms. Murphy, thank you again. And I look forward to having you back. Thank you. Thank you. It was my pleasure talking with you today. Thank you.